Well, so what do we have here? It's good to see you back. Well, look at this. I hope you can read this. Check it out. The interrogative words. Now, this is where you learn how to make a question in Spanish. So, how do we do this? Well, first we have to think. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a sentence such as... Well, I guess we could say Isabel goes to school. So, to go in Spanish, of course, ir, I-R. And that's going to translate as Isabel va a la escuela. Hmm. So, you can either way ask the question by raising the intonation at the end of the sentence, just like you make a statement, an affirmation, and you say, Isabel va a la escuela, so you bring it up, or Isabel is the subject and va is the verb. You take the verb and you place the verb in the front of the subject and you keep it flat. That way you don't have to start singing and raise your intonation and you say, va Isabel a la escuela. I cannot do it because it kind of sounds good that way. It's a musical thing. It's up to you. But you have two ways. The first way, you bring the intonation up at the end of the sentence. And the second way, the second way, you move the verb right into the front of the subject. So, first, one more time, Isabel va a la escuela, or va Isabel a la escuela. Anyway, just for the record, now I want to show you this thing behind me. Look at this. The first one that we have up here is how. Well, how in Spanish is como. Repeat after me. Como. C-O-M-O -O with the accent on the first O. You have to make it last a little bit longer as you say it, okay? Como. All right, I have a little example here. The example that I have here is Como está Ricardo? How is Ricardo? Okay, simple example here, basic. I told you that before and I'm going to say it again. The simpler, the better. Okay, remember you're learning a foreign language and you're going to have an accent no matter what. And you definitely want to give a chance to the listener to understand what you're saying. By not spreading your knowledge too much, just get to the point. So, look at the question here. Como está Ricardo? We're using the verb estar, which you remember, means to have. No, I made a mistake. It's been a long day, I suppose. Estar means to be, right? What is to have? Remind me, come on. No. Ser is the other one for to be. So you're wrong here. Let's start this over again. Estar is to be. So is ser. Now, you learned before that ser is to be used when you talk about, let's say, Telling time, the profession, and the origin. And of course, in Spanish, we have to make things complicated. So you have another way of saying to be, which is going to be estar. And this is exactly the one you're using here. You're asking how is Ricardo. So in other words, you're talking about a feeling. So you're going to use estar here in this context right here with the feeling. You're describing a condition that is likely to change. You see? Feelings change. They don't stay the same. Right? So because of that change, you're not going to use ser as to be, you're going to use estar. Here we go. Como está Ricardo? Now look at the second one. I like this one. Very tricky. This is going to be which or what. Which or what. And the very interesting thing about this one is that you can actually add es to it to mark the quantity. Right. For example, if you say ¿Cuál es el libro? ¿Cuál es el libro? You're saying, which book is it? There's only one book. El libro, the book. Un libro, a book. So, ¿cuál? Only is gonna, it's gonna end with the L. That's it. What if you want to say, which books are they? Well, wait a second here. Books with an S. You got more than one here. So, something is gonna happen to ¿Cuál? And that something is going to be the quantity, the plural, is going to be added to it. And because qual ends with a consonant, right, you cannot just add an S to it. You're going to have to add E. Listen to the sound, it's beautiful. Quales. And then, of course, right here, you have the verb ser. So, qual es el libro, singular. Which book is it? Which book is it? 
And then you want to make it plural, you're going to say, which books are they? And of course that's going to be, cuáles, you got it, come on, son los libros. As a reminder, let's conjugate the verbs here all together. You ready? All right, let's go. Yo soy, tu eres, el ella es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos, ellas son. Okay. Let's go back to the verb estar. Just a little reminder here. We're reviewing here, okay? Let's go. Estoy. Estás. Está. Estamos. Estáis. Están. Okay. Let's move on to the next word that we have here. By the way, I told you this before, I'm going to say it again. When you ask a question in Spanish, you have the question mark at the end. And you do have another question mark in the very beginning inverted upside down. See? Look at this. Como esta Ricardo? ¿Cuál es el libro? You see you have the question mark at the end and in the very beginning. It's kind of nice. It's different, you know? Alright, look at the next one. When is going to be cuando. Repeat to me. Cuando. You got it. Alright, so look at the example that I have here. When does Ricardo study? I'm using the verb estudiar, a regular AR verb. We all know about the AR verbs. So the subject is Ricardo. So therefore, we are dealing with a third person singular and we have an A ending. So when does Ricardo study? Repeat after me. Cuando estudia Ricardo. Got it. One thing you must remember there's going to be an accent on any every one of those interrogative words. They take an accent. Kind of like me, when it gets sunny outside, I put a hat on my head. I advise you to do the same thing. If you want to keep that wonderful brain, brain of yours, yeah, you definitely need to put a hat on your head. I'm just kidding. Well, really, you need to think about it though. So let's get back to the question that we have here. Accent, accent, accent. I like that. Interrogative words in Spanish always take an accent. Just like Mr. A, when he goes in the sun, he wears a hat on his head. You don't want him to start speaking French, do you? That's what I thought. Mais maintenant, si vous voulez, je peux parler comme ça et vous expliquer le prochain mot. Vous me comprenez? No. Switch back to Spanish, right? Okay. Si ustedes quieren, yo puedo hablar de las preguntas que tenemos aquí. Podemos hablar de cómo, cuál, cuál es, cuándo. Hay que usar un acento aquí. Sí. Pero... Yo pienso que es importante hablar en inglés. Hola. Oh, excuse me. Hello. I'm back. All right. Feel like we're watching Star Wars for a second here. So do not call me 3CPO, kid. No way. All right? No way. Just go with Mr. Eddie. So look what you got here. Por qué? This is my favorite one. This one is tricky. That's a very sneaky one here. Why? Because por qué, when you ask the question, it's going to be why. That's a wonderful question, isn't it? Why? Well, look at this. It's going to be spelled, all right, in two parts. Por qué, with an accent on the E. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, you're probably, you think I'm kidding you, but look what happens. If you want to say because, por qué means why in two words. But if you want to say because in Spanish, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be porque, but it's going to be attached together. And then, it's a magical trick. The E is going to lose its accent. That's right. Okay? So, look what happens. Why? Here's the example that I have. Why does Ricardo go to his house? Okay. I'm using a possessive adjective. Possessive adjective. Short form as a reminder. What are they? In English, my, your, his, her, our, your, and their. That's going to translate in Spanish as, let's go, you can do this, now repeat after me. Mi, tu, su, nuestro, vuestro, and su. You can make them plural too, as a reminder. Mis, tus, sus, nuestros, vuestros, and sus. Very good. See, we're reviewing here as we go. That's nice. So, watch this. Why does Ricardo go to his house? Por qué? Va Ricardo a su casa. Yo no lo sé. Vamos a ver. Now, right here, what you got is what. Well, what in Spanish is going to be que. Que pasa? 
what's happening. You heard that before, right? Que hora es? When you tell time. What time is it? What time is it? Que hora es? Yeah? Look at this. All right, I got this little, little question here. What is it? Que es? So remember, que to be used when you talk about objects, things. They are not alive, okay? Que, what? Same thing in English, really. You use what when you talk about an object. If you talk about a person or body, in English, you're going to use who. W-H-O. And of course, in Spanish, it's going to be very much like que. But you're going to have to add the I right before the E and the N to it, too. And you keep the accent on the E. And that's going to become, repeat after me, quien. All right, one more time. Quien. And quien is going to be just like qual in the sense that if you're talking about more than one person here, as you say who, well then you can add the quantity to it, and because it ends with a consonant again, then n, you're just going to have to add es to it, and it's going to become quienes. Check out the example that I have here. I got the first one here that is quien habla con señor A. Who speaks with Mr. A? Yeah? Now look, I'm going for the singular here, right? I can also go for the plural if I want to. Quien es hablan con señor A? If you got like a group of people talking to me, yeah, well, you're gonna have to make it plural. Of course, you got more than one person here. And that's gonna become Quien es hablan con señor A? Get it? Now listen, what you must do now, just you need to stop thinking about how often you use those questions in English. How? Often do you use this question? There we go. In the question, you already have it. You have the clue all the time. So what do you have to do? You need to memorize them. This is something I cannot do for you. We saw, we looked at them, we heard, we heard what they sound like. But here's a little tip between you and I. If you don't spend the time memorizing those words, you're not going to wake up in the morning and it's not going to be here. All right? You're going to have to earn it. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Do you have any questions? No? You're okay? Well, if you do have any questions, feel free to come by and see me. Okay? After school, of course. You take care until the next video.